Hi, Caleb with Brenos here. In today's product spotlight, we're going to be taking a look at the next generation of battle rifle, and that is the SIG MCX Spear. So April 2022, the U.S. Army announced that Sig Sauer won their uh, next generation squad weapon trials, and this is the gun that won it in the caliber that also won it. So the reason they ended up changing the caliber and firearm, the reason that whole next generation squad weapon thing exists, is because we're trying to get to a near peer capability with other global superpowers. And what that means is that other global superpowers have calibers and firearms that are outperforming what we currently have or coming close to performing. And uh, we just need to up our game as a world superpower, uh, as military. So that's what this is all about. And that's why this exists. So before we dive all the way into the gun, I think it's really important to say, because I'm gonna be giving you a lot of opinions as well as facts about the firearm. Uh, and because of those opinions, I wanna say that, yes, I was a combat engineer in the army. Yes, I deployed to Afghanistan. And yes, I have been in combat. So I'm gonna be giving you not only the gunsmith's perspective, but also the um, former combat soldier's perspective on this thing. So with that being said, let's dive into it. So in this video particularly, we're gonna be going over the firearm itself and a little bit of the suppressor. I'll briefly mention the caliber and talk about that a bit, but we're gonna save that for a completely other video. Um, there also is an optic system that is part of the uh, that army contract, but again, we're just gonna mainly focus on the firearm itself. So the Sig Sauer MCX Spear. So basically what they did was take the actual MCX, which is a 5.56, upscale it to shoot a 7.62. Uh, they were actually developing that for a different program, and then when the Army announced their uh, next generation squad weapon trial, they were like, hey, let's design this and submit it with the new caliber. Uh, and obviously it did very well. So that new caliber, let's talk about it. It's the 6.8 by 51 R277 um, Fury, Sig Fury. So that caliber, they basically took a 308 case necked it down to 277 or 6.8 and they added a steel base to the bottom of the cartridge uh, we'll do a whole separate video like i said on that sp specific cartridge to kind of get into the details of it but uh, basically what that means is that they can have a higher operating pressure and have a larger case capacity than what would be standard with just an all brass case and it's going to operate just to kind of put things into perspective here, it operates around 80,000 PSI. The gun's made to handle that. And just to kind of give you reference here, your 308 uh, Sammy spec on that, the max is I think 62,000 PSI. So a much larger operating pressure. And it's because of that operating pressure that we can take this gun with a 13 inch barrel and have a flatter shooting round uh, than a 6.5 Creedmoor out to a thousand yards and still have almost 30% more energy on impact. So that's why this round is so awesome because of its capability. Now, yes, because it is a 308 base case, that means the soldier is gonna be carrying less, but because of all the added capabilities and because you know the squad uh, that's gonna be using this firearm, they also won the contract for the squad, the new squad automatic weapon. So you're gonna have somebody carrying plenty of ammo putting down plenty of fire down range uh, so that you can make your accurate shots. You're not gonna be, in most cases, you're not gonna be doing suppressing fire with this firearm. You'll have other firearms to do that, but it does, it's safe semi-auto. You have a three position selector. So if you do need to, you can certainly do it with this firearm platform. So the first thing I wanna talk about here is gonna be the weight because the internet told me it was heavy before I was able to get my hands on it. And honestly, comparing it to other guns of its configuration, it's really not that heavy. Yes, it is heavier than an M4, but the M4 is a direct impingement gun. This is a short stroke piston gun, all right? So let's compare it to something that it's actually more comparable to. So your HK416 and 417. If you don't know what those are, your HK416 is HK's uh, piston operated 5.56 gun. Uh, basically uh, an improved version, their, their improved version 
of the M4. So their 417 is a 308 version of that same gun. Piston operated, larger uh, platform uh, based on the M4. So the HK417, which is a 308 gun with a 13 inch barrel, this gun has a 13 inch barrel as well, is heavier than this gun by a significant amount. We're talking, uh, we're talking over a pound here. So this gun is more comparable to the 416, which is their piston operated 556 gun. So with that being said, for a piston gun, this isn't a heavy gun. All right, so keep that, keep that in mind as we go through everything here. Just because the internet told you it was heavy, doesn't mean it's heavy. All right, so because it is a piston gun and because they all do ship with the suppressor, uh, it is a little bit front heavy. But with that being said, once you add an optic and the military version, uh, the military trials does have a specific optic that it won with. So that's the optic that's gonna be going on. With that, it actually balances out nicely. So that's something else to keep in mind. All right, so let's get into all the details of it. We'll start at the stock here and just work our way all the way up to the suppressor. So the stock itself is a six position. It'll fit any you know, mil spec receiver extension style stocks. So since everything is forward, all the operating system stuff is forward of the, ba of the back of the receiver, that means that we can fold the stock and not have to worry about buffer tubes, buffer springs, anything like that. Uh, so this stock being foldable is a benefit. I'll just kind of get this out the way here as we talk about it. And it uses a super robust hinge here that mounts on a 1913 rear section. Uh, so that's a really good option there. And to be honest, this is actually a weak point on the M4, the original, you know, Eugene Stoner design. So they took what was a weak point and turned it into a strong point. So that's my opinion on that. All right, so let's talk about this charging handle setup, because this is interesting. So you have your standard M4 style charging handle back here. As you can see, it's a standard military style charging handle, but with fully ambidextrous latches. So that brings me into another key feature of this firearm, not just with the charging handle, but with all of the controls, they kept it really similar to what the M4 was. Um, but making it fully ambidextrous so that it's familiar to the soldiers who are already trained on the M4, which is something very, very important. But not only that, you also have a non-reciprocating side charging handle here. It folds up nice out of the way. When you don't need it, when you need it, it's right there, uh, which is great if you're you know, shooting with gloves on, if you, for whatever reason, can't get to this because of an optic or situation you're shooting in. You can just reach up, get plenty of leverage on this thing here and pull it back. And which also kind of leads me into my personal take on, you know, how this thing will work uh, with malfunctions. It's a military firearm. It's going to malfunction at some point because of the conditions it's going to be operating in. It's going to be, you're going to be able to get way more leverage on this charging handle than this one. So I think that's a really cool feature there. So let's move forward to one of my favorite points here. This firearm still has a forward assist. So obviously the forward assist is not some outdated design if the military still sees it necessary. So after a la the, one of the recent Smithbusters we did about the forward assist, you guys have been blowing up the comments. You've been blowing up my social media accounts uh, talking about the forward assist. Yes, it's here. It's on the next generation. So obviously uh, it's still very relevant. and. Just to kind of real briefly talk about the forward assist here, it's not made for jamming your round into the chamber and making your malfunction worse. Uh, per the sports acronym, whenever you're doing your malfunction clearing or your stoppage clearing, uh, basically what that means is you always eject and try a new round before you go slapping that forward assist. So it's not made for making a malfunction worse. If you're using it correctly, it serves a very good purpose. So let's move on. So our selector lever here is fully ambidextrous. This is the civilian version here, so it's two position, but on the military version, that is indeed a three position selector. And the trigger is a nice match grade two stage trigger. Huge improvement 
over the previous mil spec trigger, no doubt about that. Uh, the bolt catch here, ambidextrous, it's on this side, as well as your standard M4 style here with a little bit of added leverage. You also have your ambidextrous mag catch button there, or mag release button on both sides. So, uh, kind of a gunsmith perspective cool factor on this thing. It has a cam on the bolt similar to your M4. So what they did was take that raceway, which is a weak point in the AR-15 upper receiver because it's all aluminum, and they reinforced it with steel that can be changed. So they took that, uh, that weak point and basically added an unlimited service life to that particular part by making it changeable. So cool thing there, really like that they did that. And as you can see, you know, there are a lot of upgraded features on this gun over what's previous. And that was all done because of operator input. That's not keyboard operator input. That's uh, actual combat theater operator input. So that's why all these features exist. SIG has a history for working with, um, with a lot of, uh, I'll just call them doers. Uh, so people who are actually using these firearms for what they're intended to be used for in combat operations, in crazy adverse operations, they take their feedback and then they put it into their designs. So that's why all these features exist. You know, moving on from there, let's talk about uh, this monolithic upper receiver or mostly monolithic, I should say. It's so if you look here uh, from basically charging handle, and it may be hard to see the seam on the camera, so I'll stop it with my finger here. This is the actual top rail. Uh, and then you have this extension, which this handguard comes the rest of the way up and wraps back around. And as you can see, there are some bolts underneath this handguard here, and that's for changing out the barrel. So I did mention this was uh, 6.8 by 51. With just a barrel swap, that's the only thing you need to change you can change it to a 7.6251 NATO or a 6.5 Creedmoor. And of course run the same magazines because they'll take the same magazines. Uh, so all you need to do is change the barrel to change calibers. And that was a design feature there, which I think is cool because if you end up in a theater uh, where you're having some ammunition issues, supply chain issues, uh, 7.62 NATO's all over the place. Um, so you can change the barrels and keep the guns running and keep your soldiers fighting easy enough. So as I mentioned before, the piston is the short stroke piston system, uh, just as found on the SIG MCX. And the really cool thing that kind of caught my attention is the actual uh, selection on the piston. So it's a two position piston, you have normal and adverse. So rather than just being overgassed all the time, like the M4 was, it was just overgassed out the factory so that it would work in all conditions. Uh, this gun has the normal and adverse, so it's only overgassed when it needs to be. So if you're operating in adverse conditions, uh, you can't, you're in a situation where you just can't clean your firearm um, because of those conditions. You can switch it over to adverse, your gun's gonna get more gas and it's gonna keep running. Uh, so cool feature there. Uh, like I said, the M4 always overgassed this gun, only overgassed when it needs to be. All right, so the barrel itself is a cold hammer forged chrome lined, uh, and it's a one and seven twist rate. And like I said before, it is 13 inches in length. So let's talk about the QD points here. You have two up front, one on each side. There's one there. There's your other one. And then you have two more in the rear, right back here. One there, and on the other side. So let's talk about the suppressor. So the suppressor itself, I'll just show you the lock here before I unlock it and really get into it. So th they use their clutch lock system, and the way that works is, as you can see, there's a lock engraved right there, and there's an unlock with a detent, or a little dimple in it. If you try to unscrew it right now, it doesn't go anywhere. In fact, it actually gets a little bit tighter. Um, but if we just simply click it over to unlock, we can unscrew it and the clutch lock system comes right off. And real quick here, I'll just point out the, that this muzzle device is just a standard flash hider made for this suppressor with the taper on the front to help lock in those gases, which I'll get to in just a second. So. 
The suppressor is their SLX MG. So now let me find it here so I can show you. The SLX MG. So if you're familiar with their SLX line, uh, you'll know that they're in canal and they are basically, rather than having different baffles and stuff like that stacked, the only way to get the baffle design that they wanted was to 3D print them. So this thing is printed out of in canal, which is pretty, pretty gnarly as a manufacturing technique goes. Uh, but it is super strong in canal is uh, very pressure and heat resistant which is why this suppressor exists in it so kind of going on from there the slx is designed to get as much of the gas out of the gun and forward out of the suppressor as possible while still actually reducing the sound so you know if you're familiar with uh, shooting a, like your m4 or just ar-15 suppressed uh, you know you get a lot of back gas coming through there. You get about an equal amount coming out the front as you do the back. It's a noticeable increase in gas coming back when you shoot a suppressed firearm. This suppressor, not just for this gun, but for any gun you put it on, reduces that gas coming back and puts it out the front. So some things to note when you're pushing that gas out the front rather than the back, um, you do have the potential for more flash because of those gases, but uh, with the flash hider cut into the front of the suppressor, it eliminated that issue. So now that's no longer an issue. So by pushing all that gas out the front makes a much more um, tolerable shooting experience for the soldier, uh, especially during full auto fire with all that extra gas floating around from the burned powder out of the cartridge. So moving on from there, what's the difference between an SLX and an SLX MG? And that's simply just the amount of material. This is thicker because it's full auto rated. This is the same suppressor they use on their belt feds. So it's just a heavier version of your basic SLX suppressor made out of in canal. All right, last but not least, let's talk about magazines. So the magazine pattern is actually your standard SR25 pattern magazine. This isn't the one it ships with. This is one I just grabbed to show you guys that it does indeed lock in just fine and actuates the bolt catch just fine. All right, so let's talk about the magazines that it's shipping with currently, and that's gonna be these here, made by Lancer. Translucent magazine, so you can see your round count in there and everything. Uh, pretty cool magazine design, and again, fits, locks, functions just fine. And if you're running a basic, you know, mag pouch setup, it's gonna it's gonna take your standard SR25 pattern uh, magazine inserts like we have on this Spiritus uh, Microfight Mark V here. It just fits right into that insert. And this kind of system is cool uh, because you can change whatever magazine insert goes into your system, and not have to worry about buying a whole new rig. So. Just know that they fit standard SR25 pattern stuff and you'll be good to go. So with all that being said, as soon as we can actually get enough ammunition to have a range day with it, uh, we'll take it out and do some filming and shooting for you guys. Uh, we wanted to give you at least something going over the gun, even though we can't get ammo right now. I know for Brownells, we just even we're having trouble getting it because it's in such high demand. But hopefully this video will hold you over until we can actually get some range time with it and give you a little more to go off of. So again, with that being said, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. If we don't know, we'll reach out to SIG directly and get the right answer for you. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.